Hello and welcome to Steve's Vintage Model Builds. Uh, we've got a kit review today, as you can see here, uh, of a new kit, a new old kit. <laughs> this is the Vintage Model uh, Builds channel, after all. Uh, and also a, a celebration today. Um, yesterday, uh, I hit 400 subscribers. So, um, thank you all very much. Um, I really appreciate uh, everyone who stops by uh, the channel. And uh, I, it's, uh, you know, it, it, what do you call it? I'm flattered. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm flattered that, uh, that so many people uh, find enough interest in what I do uh, to subscribe. So uh, I appreciate every one of you. And I'm not going to single anybody out at this time. But as I mentioned in a previous video, um, I'm going to start uh, um, each each month. I'm going to I'm going to start um, uh, naming off the new subscribers. So. Um, uh, as, as much, <laughs> and uh, I'll probably toss in a few of the originals there, so maybe I'll do like 10 and a few, and 10 and a few, or whatever the case may be. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, many thanks to uh, Ice Queen Scale Model Builds. Uh, I just joined that group recently, and uh, joined in on their live stream uh, on uh, last night. And uh, we all had a great time, and uh, they uh, they they put it out there, and uh, yeah. So I, I think uh, I think I got about twenty new subscribers from there. Um, so if you haven't checked it out already, uh, check out Ice Queen Scale Model. It's uh, it's a great channel uh, with great people. Uh, Zinzan's a member, uh, uh, as, and there's quite a few other familiar names there. Uh, people who are uh, fans of Peter Oxley's channel and, and so on and so forth. So, thanks to everyone in the community and, and, and thanks out to Sue at Ice Queen and, and, and all the gang there. Uh, everyone was, uh, has been really very welcoming and uh, they weren't too hard on me when I was showing off my builds. Uh, so, uh, I've mentioned it before, but uh, stop by and take a look. It's a great group of people, very nice people, um, serious modelers who don't take themselves too seriously, <laughs> as I like to say, uh, and I mean that in the in the warmest way possible. So, um, and while we're on the on the uh, the subject of the community as well, uh, I wanted to mention again that uh, we lost uh, our good buddy uh, Terry Senior. Uh, of uh, Hobby Barn Channel, uh, passed away on March the 2nd, and uh, I'm sure, uh, I'll put a link in, in the, you know, the description for this video, uh, but uh, Terry's son Jason uh, set up a, a GoFundMe page, um, and uh, they could really use some help uh, with the last expenses and everything like that. Uh, Terry was in hospice care at home. Um, before he passed away, and uh, those bills mount up pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, we miss you, Terry. Uh, we'll, uh, you live on in your channel, and uh, I still haven't been able to bring myself to go back and, and watch watch it since. Um, but uh, I, I will get there, and I'll get to, to a time when you know I can look at the channel and, and really smile and, and remember Terry. He, he really was. He was a great guy. And he was a credit to the whole modeling community. Uh, a lot of people are really uh, broken up uh, with, by his loss. So, um, yeah, so it's uh, GoFundMe for Terry Sr. of Hobby Barn. As I said, I'll put a link in the description. And if, uh, you know, if you can find it in yourself and in your budget to, to help out the family a bit, um, I know that uh, they'd really appreciate it. And it will be very well used. Um, they are uh, uh, good, God-fearing people. So um, 
So, uh, yeah, so that's it for that. And so, on to today's subject. Uh, we have, uh, again, uh, <laughs> uh, somebody was showing this on Ice Queen's channel. Um, and I went, hmm, oh, i got to get one. So I did. Uh, about $50 on Amazon. Uh, free shipping. And as you can see, it's a pretty good size kit. Um, so let's get into it. Get the plastic off so the, well, the reflections are like, see my hands? Are you there, Pee Wee? Peter Oxley's cat, Pee Wee, seems to like my hands. Uh, anyways, uh, my cat, Jack, he likes my hands, uh, but mostly for scratching them. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, so today we've got uh, the Tamiya 135 scale British Infantry Tank Mark IV, the Churchill Mark VII. I don't know why they have Mark IV and then Mark VII, I'm not sure. Uh, the kit was originally tooled in 1977 as the Churchill Crocodile, uh, with no figures and a trailer. Uh, this... Uh, Current iteration, uh, the the the, uh, the tank itself, still from 1977, uh, but they uh, they ditched the trailer, and uh, they've added some figures and a couple of other things. And as you'll see, um, a very good value, very good value. Okay, so the box is a little kicked around. Literally, I'm pretty sure that's what they do with them sometimes. They kick them around like football. Excuse me. And it's uh, Tamiya catalog number 35210. And you can see here, uh, on, the, on, the, on the front here, we've got the, the there's three schemes. Uh, we've got the Ben Nevis uh, for the uh, Scottish Guards. Uh, that's the one I'm going to do, uh, to honor my mother, who was McLeod. Uh, and, uh, that makes me a quarter McLeod. Uh, she was, she was, her, her father was Scots, and, um, so yeah, so I still, still got a quarter of me. Uh, uh, that's not a quarter of Scotch, that's a quarter of Scott, yes. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we've got this, and you can see here, it also comes with this uh, uh, cool little cart. It's got a couple milk cans, a lantern, some wine bottles, a basket, and as well, um, you get four figures. You get three tank crew members, and, uh, and the farmer uh, selling his wine and cheese and bread and whatever he's whatever else he's got for the boys to buy. And we get the usual stuff here. A 135 military miniature series uh, number 210, highly accurate static display model, Com uh, completely reproduced exterior detailing, and uh, detailed flexible tracks. Includes three lifelike crew figures and one farmer figure, uh, along with the car the other stuff. So, um, you know, for $50, uh, that to me says pretty good value. And so we've got the, the Ben Nevis. Uh, and then we've got the British, Britain. And they also give us a winter paint scheme. And there's nothing on the bottom, it's just regular, regular cardboard. Okay. So, yeah, let's get rid of this, this plastic. Oh, and the copyright here is 1996, I believe.
Okay. Get rid of that. And because it was wrapped in plastic, the box was not taped. So, let's see what we got. The different colors plastic. Looks like the, the figures and the clear parts are here, along with the decals. And these are molded in gray plastic. Set aside the decals for after. Not many clear parts, but there's a few. There's uh, looks like for the inside of the lantern here, and then we've got wine bottles, and looks like goggles for the crew. Very nice. No flash. And it looks like here we've got uh, looks like one uh, two crew members here. And these are the milk cans and the parts for the cart. Uh, as always with uh, Tamiya, uh, the detail on the figures is beautiful. A tiny little flash at the seams, as you'd expect. I don't know of a company that doesn't uh, have that. We've got some extra accessories, side arms here, the little basket. Yeah, very nice. Okay, and then we've got the top of the tank, almost said the lid, <laughs> the, the top of the tank body, um, nice uh, sturdy supports here, uh, this is dark green in case that's not coming through very well, uh, very dark green, uh, which is uh, the paint scheme, uh, not olive drab, dark green, and then we've got uh, two front fenders, these are bent a little bit on, on the sprue, but nothing's damaged, nothing's broken. And we've got the tub here. And yeah, from 1977, uh, you can put a motor in this and uh, make it go <laughs> if you want. Um, I mentioned it before, uh, you know, to me, uh, you know, even as a young modeler, that was always a bit of a gimmick. Um, but, you know, if it turns you on, what the heck. Um, yeah, you can put a battery pack in there and a motor and we'll see later how uh, they set up the wheels so that they they turn uh, so this this is actually it looks excuse me a minute this seems to be a darker green Although that might just be my eyes. And some very large tracks. And these are very nicely detailed. They'll need a bit of a soak uh, to make them a little more pliable. So, yeah, so those are good. Very nice detail there.
get rid of these famous uh, Tamiya Hotchkiss fashioners. Hotchkiss. No relation to the machine gun people. Hotchkiss was an American company. Is an American company, as far as I know. They still make staples. And yeah, I got a little ahead of myself here. We got the tap tips, which are very handy at this point for me. I, I use them as liners for painting stuff. And they give you a note here on uh, heating the sprue. You can heat the sprue, melt it, pull it out. Makes great antenna, ships rigging, whatever the case may be. And of course, you want to do that in a well ventilated area. And if you're a younger person, you want supervision when playing with fire. <coughs> Excuse me. And to me, it always gives us a nice bit of history. Uh, so I'll, I'll read this out. Uh, despite the serious teething problems in its mechanics, the British infantry tank Mark IV, or the Churchill, went on to earn a high reputation among the World War II British armored fighting vehicles. Following the tradition of the rhombic-shaped predecessors during World War I, its design priority was placed on heavy armor, wide trench crossing capacity, and the ability to travel across the shell-torn battlefields. Speed was not considered to be essential since its main role would be to escort and support the infantry. Okay, so uh, the tank is the Mark IV and the version of the Mark IV tank is Mark VII. That's, that's how that works. Christened the Churchill after the Prime Minister of England, it began to arrive at the tank regiments in June 1941. The Churchill's tank stable is classified into several types according to the main armament used, bore the hull and turret construction. The Mark VII was radically different from the earlier models, with the hull and turret completely new in structure. The entire hull was welded rather than being riveted. Maximum armor thickness was increased from 102 millimeters to 152 millimeters. Consequently, the weight augmented to 40 tons, resulting in a reduction in top speed from 18 to 13 miles per hour. Uh, I guess that's why they didn't call it the Greyhound. <laughs> Okay, and so the turret was redesigned for higher strength and improved productivity. The four walls, I guess what they mean by that is it was easier for the, the, the crew to work inside. Four walls uh, were a single casting of varying thickness onto which the roof plate was welded. It had a powerful 75mm gun. Uh, as the main armament. And the active service of the Churchill tanks, especially from D-Day onwards, is worthy of the name of the principal British tank. So yes, this was not a lightning warfare uh, type of piece of armor. It was meant to be slow and plodding and support the infantry. And by all accounts, it did a very good job of that. Okay, so here, oops, we've got a... Moving back to here. We've... This part's uh, almost completely broken off. But there's no damage to it. I'm not going to pull it off now. And... Yes, you should never do that, never twist, never t never twirl it and twist it off. You're going to wreck stuff. Uh, use a pair of nippers like these. Or a hobby knife.
knife. And uh, then here we've got, looks like, uh, who's this? Got another crew member here. Uh, some nice accessories, toolbox, satchel, bed rolls. And here's the gun. Got a shovel. All sorts of little bits and pieces and doodads. Uh, these look like they might be walkie-talkies or radios. Got a pair of uh, pair of binoculars here and what is probably a Lee Enfield rifle. I think they were still using those. Actually. Take that off now so it doesn't get damaged. Oh, and since we're on it, uh, about Tamiya, uh, they just released their 2024 catalog. So, um, fans will be very interested to... Oh. Uh, fans will be happy to, to see that, We're wondering what was taking so long. Uh, everybody else seems to have been out with theirs. Um, but in any case, um, yeah, we, we lost a little piece here, but that's okay. That came off. Yeah, it, you know, it doesn't really matter to me, but I know, I, I know some people like pristine boxes and so on and so forth. So, yeah, um, Amazon's not great about that. Like I say, I, I think, I think some people just kick them around like footballs. And so here we've got uh, got some side panels. Uh, got cable here that runs up the side. Let me move this out of the way. I don't know if that's any better. There we go. Again, this is in dark green plastic. And we've got a bunch of little things here. All sorts of different stuff. And then here we've got the cogs and the wheels and all that stuff. We've got some spare tracks for the side. Gas or water cans, some shovels. Great stuff. Great stuff from Tamiya. That's my girl. Okay, and so we've, we've got some uh, vinyl spacers here. These are for the wheels, uh, so they will turn. Sorry for my dirty finger. I was working on the working on a project right before this. So I'll give a little update on that. And so yeah, so that goes there. And you you probably could already see, but there there's no flash here. I mean, there's just no flash. Um, everything's just perfect and, and beautifully detailed. And got 
the machine gun here. Sides, suspension, turret ring, all very nice, very, very nice. Well, and I should mention too, this, uh, this kit manufactured in the Philippines. And, uh, I'd much rather that it be manufactured there than uh, somewhere else. If you know what I mean, I'm not going to say say anything about that. But yeah, there we go. Clear parts on top. All right, and so. Lots of decals. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do the Ben Nevis uh, edition. There's also Britain and and Hyseni, whatever that is, and uh, various different uh, patches and so on and so forth. The usual Tamiya. Mia decals and yeah a lot of people say you know the Tamiya decals they're they're thick and they don't like the way they go on uh, you know for people who are all thumbs or you know have difficulty with stuff like that I, I find them to be very easy to work with and although you know, they might not settle in uh, the way some people uh, settle onto the plastic the way some people like. Uh, that's why this stuff is made, Microsoft. So if uh, what you do is you, you, you apply the decal fix underneath, uh, that'll help to prevent the silvering. And then you put the Microsoft on top after the decals are fixed. And uh, that helps uh, soften the decal and helps it settle into whatever panel lines or whatever the case may be. I'm not that particular, but some people are. And uh, just like the staples on the plastic bags, they don't seem to be in a hurry to change that. So, we have to live with it. Okay, so we get the usual read before assembly. We've got a tanker here. Uh, this rough looking fella here. Um, you know, I, I kind of like the way they do this. You know, they, you know, they put, a, put a tanker there. Or, you know, if it's an auto kit, they, they put a, uh, a grease jockey or grease monkey, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so that's just appropriate. Excuse me. Uh, read carefully, blah, blah, blah. Uh, recommended tools. Basic stuff. Uh, this mark indicates uh, the color to paint or that it needs to be painted. They give you the paints that you'll need. Uh, dark green, gunmetal, flat aluminum, khaki. All sorts of different stuff. Okay. All right, and we start off with the uh, the wheel assembly. These are the driver wheels, uh, the cogs, whatever you want to call them. Sprockets, that's what they're called. There's the drive sprocket, and there's the idler wheel. And then uh, we move to the frontal armor. Unshaded arrow indicates it do not cement. Uh, like for this, put the machine gun in there. I mean, you can cement it if you want, but then it's not going to rotate or whatever this is called. 
I know in an airplane this is called rotation. And then uh, it indicates here uh, for the hatch, open or closed, you need to decide and choose, make a decision. As always with Tamiya, uh, short, uh, straightforward steps, nice and nice, nice big illustrations. Um, I've, I've built some kits where like these numbers here, they're so teeny tiny, Academy's bad for that. I like Academy, don't get me wrong, but yeah, some of their instructions are teeny tiny. Um, yeah, and so uh, here we go, more frontal armor, da 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 la da la da la How to put the tracks together, I don't know why they're doing that here, that should go pretty close to the end, but um, that's just me. Um, uh, they give you tips on, on how to do it, uh, you can use the hot knife, hot screwdriver uh, method, uh, and... Uh, Crazy glue. Sometimes you can get away without the crazy glue. Sometimes you need the crazy glue. Uh, but what I like to do is um, uh, staple them together with a Hotchkiss with Hotchkiss fasteners, um, and uh, that keeps them in place uh, for when you're when you're doing the melting and. Then when you're done, you can take off the Hotchkiss fasteners, or you can leave them on if you want a really strong bond, and you're not too particular about that. And of course, uh, when you're doing the melting, uh, younger people, younger modelers uh, should always be done under with supervision, and and you do need to be really very very careful. I use um, rather than a screwdriver. I use an old X-Acto knife blade that I'm, I'm done with as far as cutting is concerned. And uh, I just change that out. And uh, and again, you want to be really careful. I mean, you, you don't want to heat up the knife and then like that. That's a sure way you're going to wreck your tracks. What you want to do is uh, heat it up, make sure it's nice, good and hot. Don't touch it with your fingers. You'll know if it's hot when you touch the thing and it melts. And uh, then it, it, it's just like I do like this. Ding, ding, ding. Rather than. And you might have to heat the knife more than once, but hey, no big deal. So uh, it's nice that they give you the, the, the tips there. And then from here we move on, uh, putting the wheels together. Some people like to do uh, teeny tiny meticulous things. I, I'm okay with that up to a point. tell you the the airfix 176 buffalo my goodness it's got all these teeny tiny little parts in it. i mean 176 scale they're just ding, 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 and there's just so many of them but looks like it's a good kit i haven't got to it yet but uh looks like it'll build up nicely and comes with a willis jeep and they indicate here, note the sides of the wheel, make sure you get the right ones facing the right way. Then attaching the wheels, uh, they've done this, uh, they, they've done this, it's kind of ingenious uh, what they've done here. Uh, is that you've got these two pieces here that go on the side and the uh, the idler and, and uh, drive sprocket are sandwich between them. Well, the drive sprocket goes at the, it, it doesn't, but the, 
the idler wheel does. And I expect somewhere, I don't see it, but I expect somewhere, it will tell me where to put those uh, vinyl spacers. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna motorize it, so it, you know it doesn't really matter. Uh, but even if you don't motorize it, you know you can push it along. I don't do that either. But hey, war gamers might like that. I don't know. Excuse me. And we've got the upper hull, uh, hull construction. Indicates to remove all these pieces, all the shaded pieces. More hatches, side pieces, a jerry can. Looks like a couple other storage containers here. The cable and the uh, Track pieces, I guess one on each side. And step seven is the turret assembly. All the various different, different things. Putting the turret onto the upper hull. Oh, I see. It's because of these fenders. That you put the tracks on early. So yeah, okay. Now I figured that out. Uh, I'm a little discombobulated today, aren't I? Sorry, guys and girls, those who might be watching. And then here we move on uh, to the uh, final uh, final assembly. the various hull parts and accessories, bedroll, tarp, whatever that is, and assembling the cart and the little accessories. That's so cool, putting a little clear plastic piece in there for the lantern. I like that. And there's even a decal for the wine bottles. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then, so when it's put together, it's, you know, it's a milk cart. Um, poor farmer, I guess, he, I guess he has to pull it by himself. You know, the French eat their horses. <clears throat> okay. You know, <laughs> especially when you've been under occupation by the Germans for so long. And then we move on to the figures here. Uh, so we've got the, the gunner. And he's kind of, he's sitting there. Uh, we've got the farmer holding up a bottle of wine. Offering a bottle of wine. You know, however many francs. Or sous. Um, and then we've got the driver. He's leaning down. Going for the bottle, <laughs> of course. And uh, then there's the, the loader. He's just kind of standing there smiling. Ooh -hoo, we're going to eat good tonight and drink good tonight. You can see here how they've, uh, they've shown you the uh, layout example positioning here. Farmer. Uh, la la. Now, this is optional. Um, as far as I can tell, there's only the three figures. But maybe you can do them up in different ways. I don't know about that. It says optional. So, I don't know whether that's optional figures you can buy or whatever. And uh, here's a quirky little thing that to me it does with <laughs> some of their kits. Uh, they give you a little map here, 
and uh, you know if you want to if you want to do it like this, then uh, you can you can cut. They don't give you a decal; they give you this, and you have to cut that out and uh, color it or not. So uh, that's kind of interesting. You'd think they'd do a decal on that, but. Eh. Very successful company, been in business for a very long time. They know their business. We love you, Mr. Mia. Oh, yes. Okay, and then uh, tips on applying the decals. Uh, they indicate here a paint marker. I got a couple of these. They're super handy. And you get the super fine ones, and they're just great for... Um, aircraft uh, control panels and car dashboards and stuff like that you just uh, all those little dials and gauges and you just and you're, you're you're good ding 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 great stuff got these from amazon too i think it was a pack of six for 20 bucks or something three gold three silver <coughs> excuse me Okay, and so uh, we get the uh, the three different iterations. We get the 6th Guards Tank Brigade, 3rd Tank Battalion Scots Guards. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, then we've got the 34th Tank Brigade, 107th RAC. Not sure what that means. Well, duh, Steve. Royal Armored Car. Hello. There you go. And then we've got the uh, 31st Tank Brigade, 9th RTR. Which is the Royal Tank Regiment. And so we've got those three iterations. And then there's a, a winter scheme uh, for painting. So, um, interesting there. They don't give you decaling on that. So, I guess, excuse me. And more painting details. And that's all she wrote. Okay, so uh, now it's ratings time. And I'll put up a card for it. Uh, but I, I use a 12-point system, uh, 10 standard points, 2 points for packaging, 2 points for sprues, 3 points for parts, and 3 points for instructions. Each of those four categories can uh, earn a quarter point bonus for any wow factor. And um, up to one full bonus point uh, for value. And I look at value not only the cost of the kit, uh, but the, uh, the, the, uh, the, you know, the amount of parts, I mean, you know, you, you pay 50 bucks for a kit and, you know, <laughs> there's like 15 parts. Uh, I don't, I don't consider that to be a good value. Uh, might be simple to put together. That really is a shake and bake kit. <laughs> um, also, you know, the, the, the amount of time I can expect to, uh, the time and enjoyment I can get out of it. Uh, so, um, you know, so in this case, about a $50 kit, <coughs> excuse me, which my wife will be glad to know, uh, was bought on points, <laughs> uh, TD reward points. Thank you, TD. Uh, so didn't cost me a penny. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, you get a, you, you know, you get a $50 kit, say you get 10 hours out of it, five bucks an hour, do the math. Uh, not too many hobbies, uh, where you can, uh, get hours and hours of enjoyment for five bucks an hour. Okay, so, 
Uh, as far as the packaging goes, yeah, I, I got to ding them there. 1.5. Uh, that's not to me his fault. It's a nice, sturdy box. Uh, but, again, it was uh, pretty bashed up. And for the sprues, uh, two full points plus a quarter bonus point because there was, like, no flash. Obviously, everything was there. It was supposed to be. And I, I didn't see any, you know, to me it never has awkward ejection pin points or nubs or any of those things. Uh, full three points for the parts. The quality of the plastic is good. Uh, nicely detailed, especially the figures. There were no warped or broken parts, although there were a couple uh, severed off from the sprue. But I already dinged them on that for the packaging. And uh, 2.75 for the instructions. Uh, and the the uh, quarter point uh, deduction there. Uh, you know, to me, instructions are always great. Uh, but they're usually in black and white. So, got to take a quarter point off because there's no, no color. Uh, except on the box. But as far as value goes... Uh, I'm going to give it a full point. Uh, you get four figures. You get the cart uh, with all the accessories as well as the, the tank itself. So that brings us up to 10.5 out of 12. A very respectable score. And... Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to look forward to building this. I've got the walker uh, in the stash, uh, but I think I'm going to do this one first. Excuse me. Um, mostly because I'm out of all of trap paint. <laughs> going to pick some more up at the hobby, hobby shop tomorrow. But i got plenty of dark green. Yeah. And this is a perfect perfect specimen for, uh, what do you call it, uh, rattle can, yeah, rattle can dark green, got it here somewhere, yeah. TS2, I think it is, yeah, okay, so uh, that's it for this review, and it's a big kit, uh, good value, and as I said, about $50, and that's Canadian dollars, uh, everything in my videos, I'm Canadian, I'm in Canada, so it's all Canadian, which I, I suppose in in, uh, in the UK would probably be about eh, 22 pounds, something like that. I suppose 60 cents uh, to the pound, so yeah. Um, but yeah, a very good value, not too complicated. It would be great for a, a, a novice uh, or even a beginner with some, uh, some help and supervision and mentoring and tons of accessories. So, uh, good stuff, Tamiya. Uh, you're doing great. Uh, oh, yeah, I teased. Uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, Ice Queen scale models. Uh, there's a group build going on now. Uh, helicopters. And so this is going to be one of my entries. The group build's on until June. But uh, this is the Trumpeter 172 Chinook. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Nice detail on the seats and stuff that I've done a good job with. Ah. And um, yeah, so this is a work in progress. Uh, I've got an Italeri uh, 148 Huey on the way. Uh, as I said, the uh, uh, this current uh, group build goes through till June, so uh, lots of time. Uh, this was a kit uh, I got for my birthday from my wife, uh, who is uh, very supportive of my hobby, mostly because it keeps me out of her way. And so, yeah, there we go. Um, that's uh, that's where we're at now. 
pretty happy with the way the engines turned out. Did a good job there. And uh, this looks a little bit messy, but it doesn't matter because uh, that's going to be covered up. Oh, we got a little issue there. No, no, that's okay. That's uh, bent somewhat. So, uh, yeah, um, there you go. Nice detail. I mean, for 172, especially. And uh, my first and only trumpeter kit. Heard mixed things about trumpeter, uh, mostly about the instructions. Um, and I have to say, well, I'll do I'll do a follow up on that. But, anyways, yeah, it's a nice kit. It was beautifully packed, packaged, and um, a goodly number of parts, but not too many. Uh, which is another thing that trumpeter's been known to over engineer a little bit sometimes. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so uh, that's it for today. We're uh, a little over 50 minutes. Uh, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, and uh, so thank you again to my subscribers. And uh, thank you for returning viewers who haven't subscribed and new viewers. I uh, hope you will subscribe. I, you know, it's uh, my, you know, I, um, yeah. There's lots, lots more people out there, lots more, way more professional than I am, way better than I am. And like I say, but it's gratifying to know that, uh, that people appreciate what I'm doing here. So uh, thanks again, and I hope everybody has a good night, safe days. And uh, spring's upon us, and the nicer weather, unless you're in Australia, I guess you're... Uh, you're in your autumn time and approaching winter which is a good time to get in there and load up your stash so great kit good job uh, to Mia and uh, I'm really gonna look forward to building this I've got <laughs> I've got I don't know five or six on the go now uh, I pick them up I put them down I pick them up again I put them down I paint this, da 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 da. da. Some, uh, some folks uh, criticize me. Well, they don't criticize me. They tease me about it. Um, uh, you know, some people are just like you know they'll uh, they'll they'll spend all the time just on one kit, and they won't start another kit until they've finished that kit. Uh, me, eh, attention deficit disorder uh, gets the better of me sometimes. And, and, and sometimes I, I, I just, I don't, you know, I don't feel like doing whatever needs to be done on a particular kit. But I want to do something. So I'll start a new one and, you know, kind of do a rotational basis. <laughs> all right. So, again, thank you all very much. I appreciate your time. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And uh, don't forget about uh, Terry Sr. And, uh, and his family. Uh he, he really was a, a treasure to the hobby community. So uh, thank you again, and uh, everybody have a great night.